Hey guys, it's Ellen and welcome to my channel and it's Monday, so we do Mini Monday Madness. This is kind of like a mixed media, watercolor and a little gouache to create this impressionistic looking uh, landscape. We have fun just tapping and dabbing and paint, moving paint around, playing around with both of those two things. And all you need is a tube of white gouache with your watercolor. You don't need a whole bunch of different water, uh, tubes of gouache. So if you have any questions, please leave in the comment section. Also, please don't forget to hit the, hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Yes. So there's no need for a traceable on this. It's super simple. We can play around with it, making any kind of shape tree you want. Um, also, check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays, and a live stream on the top tier once a month. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. You know. Um, it's just a little more things. If you want to just do something extra than I have here on YouTube, I have longer tutorials on there. So check it out right up here. Boop. So without further ado, let's get painting. Okay guys, so let's go over supplies. I have a piece of Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I just taped down with some Scotch magic tape on just a thick piece of cardboard to hold it in place. I'll be using my Princeton eight long round velvet touch series brush. Um, I have my paper towel here, my paints, and I talk about them and I, I have water jars up here. And when I talk about these, I have, they're all over, these paints are all in the description box and I talk about what colors I use, what I mixed, all that as I'm doing the painting. There's no need for a traceable for this one, we're just kind of playing around with paint and I'm creating like a really fun spring landscape, you know, maybe some white floral trees and whatnot. So I made a bunch of greens and I like to do peacock blue with yellow, cabin yellow deep. I created a medium green here and I add some brown, which is the burnt umber. You create these like more olive type greens. Same thing here, but less blue, more yellow, brighter green here, a little touch of brown. And up here, it's more with Prussian blue and the so many of my videos have the same colors though. And then here is ultramarine blue with some, this is a color called neutral tint. It's like a gray purple kind of color. You could use Payne's gray, um, ultramarine blue, mix them as like a, you know, like a bluish gray. And then it's a color here called Verdier blue, which is really pretty. The whole bind. W295 that I like to play with also. So let's just play around. Do you want to do a sky? Do you want to do not a sky? These are things you gotta think about when you're playing around with uh, painting. And spring, so you think of light colors. The sky could be kind of gray, but you wanna keep it kind of bright. So either you're gonna do like mostly ground from here down, and then just a little bit of sky, or more sky than ground, or half and half, and playing around with that. I'm gonna play around with um, having the sky kind of like three quarters away. So I'm just gonna have this going down on an angle. Oops. I'm using the Verdier Blue. See, it's very wet, by the way. See, the consistency should be like tea, coffee tea. So I'm just gonna go down here in an angle. As you see, and I'll just paint the top part, blue sky. If I wanna take, put some clouds in, I'll show you how I do the technique with clouds. I don't wanna keep it super bright. It's like a nice, I'm gonna make a nice pale, Kind of pretty sky. See, I'm just going down here on an angle, like it's on a hill. Getting this one nice, filled in with the birdie blue color, water down. I'm filling it all in first. This is why this is so easy. I'll show you how to create clouds. Make it get a little bit brighter, add some more color. See, I'm adding more color. You can take some of that ultramarine gray blue. Kind of play around with adding some of that color up in here. So I'm just kind of tapping it, going across, little marks. It's gonna bleed because it's all wet already. Now, I don't know if I wanna get too dark. I'm playing around with the darkness here. I might go back and add some more of this Verdier blue mixed in. Do you want to keep it light? So I might go and start to make some clouds. You can take your brush. There's a couple of techniques. Clean up your brush. You can kind of twist it. 
remove the paint. See that? I, you know, there's different ways to do it. You can take a paper towel, kind of lift it up, scrunch it. This is a super easy way. And just push down and you're creating clouds. Just like that. And then you have your funky sky. And now that's going to be an area you can't have watercolor go into because there's no wetness there. You removed it. So I'm adding some more of this verde blue water down up in here. And it's going to go everywhere else the clouds are not going to go. And then down, some down here. Just something you don't have to play around with. Maybe I'll add a little underneath the clouds over here. Some shadowing. And maybe get a little bit darker still up here. See, I just tapped some of that ultramarine with the gray color tones. And there's a little sky. Yeah, kind of looks like nothing, right? <laughs> Again, you can kind of play around with lifting up paint for your sky and adding more color if you want to, if you want it to be bright. So I'm going to go back in and add some verde blue. Those are, the clouds are kind of faint, so if you want to really see them, you might need to add some more color. So I'm doing here. But, you know, from what we're doing, you don't even need to see the clouds, really. I'm going to remove some paint. All right, there's that. So now in the lower half, obviously we're gonna have some green. And we're gonna play around with these greens and some this brown. So I'll start off with my lighter one, which is this bright chartreuse kind of green here. Just grab that. I'll grab some water. See, really wet. As I grab that water, I'll grab some deeper green. Kind of push it all around in here and even darker green here on the edge right up in the corner that's my doodle shaking Brady and go down here so you can define the hill so I'm just going to kind of bleed in some of those colors Get some more of this light color back here. See how I'm just kind of mixing back and forth. I don't want to leave the white. I do want to color it in. This is so simple. But you it's see I'm grabbing some brown. Just kind of tapping this. Tap tap tap. Tap some of the darker color in. It will bleed. If you don't want it to bleed too much, take off some excess water on your paintbrush by tapping it on the paper towel and then putting the color in. See if it's a little wet over here, you're going to get these little bleeds, which are kind of nice. It's like instant grass. You can grab some Prussian blue, some burnt umber, and mix some of that green with it. It's even deeper, darker. And just kind of tap in teeny little taps, see? Not everywhere, just here and there, maybe a little more brown. Yeah. And here. We'll make it interesting. We're going to add some trees in a bit. Right now we're just doing simple greens. If you find the paint is just sitting there, and go like this, tap it on your paper towel. I just kind of push the paint around with your brush. Get off the excess paint. I'm going to go back in here. Some more medium green. I can add some deeper one back here. Even just blue itself. Prussian blue. Right up in this left hand corner. A little too much blue. 
So that's all you do. Like you, when you're creating like little landscapes, just something simple like this. And it's just at an angle going down. Right, this this alone is perfect, simple. Well, it's still wet if you want to play around with taking some white gouache. I wouldn't suggest splattering it because, you know, it's going to go everywhere. You could just strategically place it. So I'm watering it down. Consistency of like heavy cream on this little brush. Tap, little taps. Little teeny weeny taps. Like a field. Oh, my paper towel went over there. It took out some of my color. So I'll have to go back in here and fix it. No big deal. Don't fret. Okay. So you saw me put some of the gouache in there. Little teeny taps. And we'll get a little thicker with the paint. Teeny taps. See how I'm kind of clustering in a section? All right, at this point, I kind of just want to let it dry because we're going to add some trees and then we're going to play around with that. So let's just let it dry and come back. Okay, so now we're going to put in some trees. Um, we're going to just imagine where the... Okay, so once that's dry, let's start putting in some more fun flowering trees. Uh, I think I'm going to have like a big one kind of, kind of coming around this way. And then I'm going to have one kind of leaning here. So I'll just kind of pencil like one like leaning here, here. So for the, this one, it's going to be like one that's coming out of the corner. I'm going to grab my greens here and play around with them again. You're not going to really see many of the branches. I'm just taking the green. See how I'm going to tapping this color in here. This medium green. And have it coming down. Just like so. And then we have another tree. You can imagine like a brown tree kind of coming over here, leaning tower of tree. And so I'll put some greenery here. Add some of the deeper greens. Don't be afraid to add the deep greens because we're going to go ahead and add some bunch of white flowers. The top part you can add more of a later, prettier green. I like to keep my paper towel close by. Brady, shh. My dog is my studio mate and he growls at things like walk by like other dogs. You see him just kind of tapping in. Tap, 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 tap. Take your time with this. If it's too wet, like see how I'm going to go back to the paper towel, removing it. Putting some little green up here. Grab some darker green, deep green, some light green. Put some lighter green, just really tiny little dots kind of like going up here, like flyaway greens. And some coming down here. Just kind of like an expressionistic type of painting. Just having fun. I'm going to throw in some deeper greens. Grabbing, making some more deep green. It's my Prussian blue, my yellow. Oops. I'm trying to clean off my brush to get that yellow. Prussian blue, upper umber. See, now I can just kind of bleed in that green much darker. Can add some brown down here. Play around with adding some browns in here. More Prussian blue. Wanting the foliage to come down here, like it's cascading downward. Just 
Um, you can add some bright little ones, like yellowish kind of color tones up this way. There's a method to this madness. Now you can start to form like the brown. I'm mixing my burnt umber with my neutral tint, so it's like a deep blackish brown with a tree trunk. And I'm kind of put some branches in here. I have them bleed a little bit. This one you can't really see the trunk. It's kind of like over here, it's inside. You can put another one way back here if you want to. It's like the hill of flowering trees. And then as you have this tree here, you might want to start to put in some deeper greens, the shadows. See, I'm just kind of tapping, tap, tap, tap. A darker green. One of those greens that we mixed. It should be darker than the greens that are on the ground. Can add a little brown to this. Okay. So I'm going to go back in every now and then add some like brighter green and some deeper, darker. See how I'm just doing that? Taking my time tapping this in here, the darker colors, squinting my eye. I can add some of the branches. Remember, burnt umber with neutral tint. Minimal amount of water. Just put the little branches kind of going up in here. I don't want them super dark. I do want to know that you can see the brown. And same thing here, you're just kind of sticking these little branches outward and go up a little bit. Have them coming down here a little bit. Kind of crazy branches. And then on the ground part, you can sweep up little teeny grasses. So you take tip of your brush, sweep little teeny grasses. Again, you can just take your brush, water it down paint, deeper color paints, and just kind of, see, I'm kind of just like tapping in color here. I'll probably get a little bit darker up that way. I want to add some more bright yellow. Down this way, and out here. Same thing with the greenery. But we do want the trees a little bit darker, so I'm going to add some, the um, white gouache Gonna make my darker green here. My yellow's gotten messy, but I'll clean it up. So mix up some nice deep greens. See, I'm going back in, making my greens a little bit darker. There's a reason for this, and I'll show you in a bit. Deeper ones up this way. Don't be afraid. It's also good to step back once in a while to see if it doesn't look like a mess. <laughs> and put some darker greens on this way. And some coming down here. Because we'll be putting some white gouache on top of it. It's good to squint. And you can put teeny tiny little leaves up this way again. And teeny tiny ones down this way. It's kind of like, be you know, very expressionistic with it. Don't be afraid. I'm gonna grab some more of this bright yellowish green. Can I just see I'm just tapping at minimal water. I'm just kind of tapping the color in. It's an expressionistic paintings or like uh, just really tiny taps of color. See, I'm just tapping in that yellow green, minimal water. It changes the painting even more so. Even more, just see how I just added that bright yellow. Put some back here. Again, now in a little trick, you can take your white gouache and mix it with your watercolor. So now I made that really like 
light, light green. I'll add some more yellow and green color to it. But it's, it's, it's gouache, so it can go right on top of the color. See, a little light. Play around with your gouache. All right, now speaking of the gouache, let's water this down. I'm gonna use this for our balloons on the tree. Now I'm gonna do some in clusters and some tiny. So we can have some bigger ones, kind of tapping here. Oh, see it's, it's still wet, so it's bleeding. Try up in here where it's not bleeding. Just little teeny taps up, up in the tree, little clusters of white, giving that expressionistic. So it's a little too wet here. So I might go back in and fix my color here. I'll put the deep green again. I don't want to lose that. It's Prussian blue. And then I'm going to dry that and come back in with the gouache. Okay, so I fixed it. I dried it up. Now I'm going to take my gouache, water it down, take my brush, and so I can do the bigger clusters. See? And then tap, 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 smaller ones, big clusters, tap, 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 teeny ones next to it. You want it to kind of look organic. The flowers are kind of cascading downward. And then you get some clusters out this way. And then up on the tree branches up this way. See? We're getting expressionistic. And then we add some chunkier ones here. Little teeny ones. Have some cascading down here. So like a flowering tree. Can put some bigger ones. That's why it's good to have the dark color tone so you can see the white on the tree. All the little flowers up this way. And then of course, they can be like all over like floating. If you wanted to put little teeny ones down here, see? There's the little feel we're talking about. Sometimes it's good to just paint it in with your brush. Tap, tap, tap. Little field. So you get the spring field, the spring trees. You can make these blooms a little even bigger too. See, I'm really clustering it there. I'm gonna step back and see how I do it. If I can see the diff. Mm. I might wanna add some more greens back in here. You can add them back too. Don't feel like you can't. And I'll add some shadows with some neutral tint in here under the tree. I'll put some branches here. Now I might go back in after I stood up and see my greens, if I wanted to go back and add some greens. And then fix the tree branches. Can add some little green grasses sticking up. So I've gone in the front I'm just mixing up some colors here. Very minimal water. And I'll go in and add some deep little grasses in the front. Just with this brush. See how much darker they are? You can play around with that too. So those little white blooms show up. And I'll go back in here and add them for the shadow for the trees. 
All the stuff you get to play around with. Water down some more green. You know, maybe um, the back field. There's too much, just not enough distinction between the, the trees and the field. So I'm going to take my gouache, go back in here, kind of take out some of that so you can see. See that? I can just erase that. Now you can see the tree better. So you can add gouache to the painting. Can add some more white. But that I added white to that Brodier blue, white gouache. And now you can see the field better. Right? More distinction with the trees. And I'll add a little color up here, the white. It's all the fun things you can do with the gouache to make it look romantic and pretty. So I just added some gouache with that white, and I mean with the greens. So now the trees are starting to pop out more. You see what I'm saying? I'm just kind of doing it on the side. There's little movements, little dash movements. See, now it looks more impressionistic. And then I'll do the same thing with adding some greenery coming down. And you could add the white blooms too. There's all the fun things you can do just by taking gouache and mixing it with the watercolor. And I'll just take my time. Okay, so I went back in, I added some more greens, and then I'll go ahead back in again. This is a constant back and forth, and I'll add in some more of my, whoops. I don't want it like this flat white. You want to kind of mush it. So it makes sense. And then we add a little teeny clusters of the blooms. So some big ones and then little ones. So it makes sense. And then some little ones up here. And then of course, you can add some more blooms way in the back, little whites, and up in here. To get it to that expressionistic, add some little teeny dot ones here. Another thing I do is add that Verdier blue around by the flower blooms. It really kind of pops them up. And I always suggest standing up and stepping back and looking at your little painting and see if you like it. And you, this color, that Verdier blue color, is so pretty. You can add a little white to that, white gouache. And you can put little blue, teeny little blue blooms. It was just adds that impressionistic look to it. Blue ones out here. You can add some blue up in here too in the trees. Don't be afraid. You can go back and take out the white and add way more of the verdiate blue itself. I need to get that little blue touch of fun. Just play around with that. Add a little more bright yellow greens, some areas that Maybe it seems a little too flat. So I'll take some yellow. I'm gonna go back over some of these in the background there. We'll brighten it up. This is a constant back and forth, which I like about doing the expressionistic kind of style. See, I had some white back here and I took it away. I want you to play around with that. And the shadow would go kind of like up on the hill up in here. And then over in here, back here. So that's that. Let's remove our little fun guy here. The reveal. You can do pink flowers, you don't have to do blue flowers. 
all white flowers. This would be fun to do something kind of simple. Look how pretty it looks. A little spring floral. So if you have any questions, um, leave in the comment section. Play around with just tapping in the color, making more trees. I might go back in again as I'm standing up and looking. I add some more hanging, you know, blooms this way. So it's a mini spring the landscape. <laughs> I could paint everywhere. <laughs> so again, have fun guys painting. Don't make yourself tortured. Uh, just enjoy it. Enjoy the process. Take care, guys, and I'll speak to you soon.